Hi everyone, my name is Mariana with Claims Adjuster. I'm a public adjuster in South Florida and I used to work for an insurance uh, for a public adjusting firm and I opened up Claims Adjuster to do things just a different way where I feel like we do take the client into consideration and they are our main objective at the end of the day. So today I'm gonna like I promised to you guys we're gonna pay play the pay or deny game. So I want you guys to pretend like you are an insurance adjuster and you work for the insurance company. I can't pretend because I never work for the insurance company. Um, I'm only for the client. You thought that Wendy's not here today. I know. Right? <laughs> <You're not working laughs> she would win all. She'd probably answer all these correct. So, as you guys can see, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you guys pictures of clients of mine and the outcome of their claims, just so you guys can see what I see every day. You know, day in and day out. Okay. All you guys are forced to play, so you don't have the option. <laughs> so this client, they had, um, as you guys can see, there's nothing missing on their roof. There's no missing shingles. None of them look, you know, ripped or broken or cracked or anything like that. But this client, unfortunately, was getting spots on their ceiling, and they weren't really sure. A lot of times, I come across damages like this, and you know, insureds are really—they're not expected to know everything that it takes to build a house or build a roof or anything like that. But that's why you hire a professional that has your best interest in mind. Um, so in this case, what I was seeing is that a lot of these shingles, I marked one here, I can actually lift it up and there would, I'll find debris underneath. What that means is that the, the shingle at some point is being lifted by wind and then brought back down. And with the sun, you know, it sticks back to the, to the roof, but in reality, your roof is not, you know, uh, so working well. Tight. Yes, correct. So it's allowing mm -hmm. water to come in. So whenever you have rain that just falls, you probably won't see any issues, but whenever there's wind and rain, he's probably gonna start having, you know, water coming through. So if you guys were the insurance company, would you pay or deny this claim? Deny. How many pay. for the pay? Pay, pay, oh, pay. Deny. And deny? Deny. deny. And the denials take it. So the reason why this, good job guys. Because <laughs> that's what they do, they deny first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> deny first? Oh, of course. Well, oh, you got the most, uh, that's, that's well, the next part. These are all my clients, they all have been paid. Um, the reason why the insurance company denied this claim is because when you get underneath, um, this is the sheeting, this is what goes underneath all, you know, the, the shingles and underneath the plywood. This is what you'll see from if you're standing inside of your attic, for example. So the insurance company, what they saw was this. This indicates to the insurance company that there was something that was going on long term. Insurance companies do not like to see that something is going on long term. They actually are very specific that you have 14 days to file your claim. If they can prove that it's something that's going on longer term, then there's a potential of you getting denied. So I was able to ultimately get this client paid in letting the insurance company know that the client did not know that this was going on inside their attic because like all of us, no one, I'm sure none of you are going home tomorrow or tonight checking your attics for roof leaks. You only notice when you start having spots like I showed you guys in the previous one, when you're having spots like this, then you're like, man, what's going on? And even when he got in his roof, he wasn't able to see any damages. So um, that's the first one. This is the next one. So this one, it was a client that was having water that was coming into their house. They, it wasn't coming through the roof. We had a roof worker out there. They couldn't figure it out. Um, would you guys ultimately pay or deny this claim? As you, can, you guys can see, there's some mold fold forming over here and some spots here. And this is starting to peel off, which is like the side corner of the walls. Raise your hands for pay this claim. Okay, 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 and deny? Now everybody wants to deny this claim. <laughs> I was paid. <laughs> oh, okay. So this one is paid. So the reason why this one was paid, uh, there, she actually filed a claim on her own. The insurance company denied the claim to begin with. And I was able to get involved and I read her policy. I read the own, the policy to the insurance adjuster word by word. And I was able to point out that if the water had been coming from the roof, which we were able to prove that the water did not actually come from the roof, it was coming from her gutter. Her policy was very specific in saying that if the water was coming from the gutter, then they should pay the thing. So I was able to get that reversed and ultimately get this client paid. So it does make a difference, again, to have someone who represents your interest and not the insurance company. This insurance adjuster, who essentially represents this particular policy, couldn't pay this client based on the wording that we were both reading. So it's information that's available to the both of us, but we're looking at it with different perspectives. All right, what about this one? This one, it was a client who had their ceiling eventually fall down into their interior. And here you can kind of barely see, but this is just water stains along the side, the side of the wall. And all this flooring, it was really nice oak wood flooring, was starting to buckle and tent. Would you guys pay or deny this claim? Uh, one, one or two story? Uh, uh, this is one, one story. Okay. One story home in Miami Shores. 
paid. So I was able to get this client paid. Uh, this is with Universal. Uh, they actually did not have any coverage for wind roof damage, but they did have coverage for the ensuing. So I didn't even bother to try to fight with the insurance company for their flat roof because th there was no coverage for that in their policy. But they did have ensuing damages. And to be honest, the ensuing damage for this particular client was a lot larger than their flat roof, which they could have probably gotten fixed for $6,000. The interior of their home, it was this nice wood flooring that went throughout their whole entire home. Um, they had a lot of damage here to the entry of their closet area, the hallway area, and I was ultimately able to get them around $40,000 to replace their wood flooring. $40,000? 40, 40 for wood flooring. Wow. Yeah. When I say I represent your interests, I represent your interests. <laughs> a lot of interests. <laughs> yeah. So, you um, I come what? to my Sony Isle apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, something else to look out for. A lot of times I feel like my position, a lot of people don't know what a public adjuster does, and that's half of my battle. Uh, you know, your insurance company, bank.